Hi, this is Tim Reinbot, and we applied for and received a specialty crop block grant from the state of Missouri through the federal government to, to examine Fisalis in both the field and the and the greenhouse. And you may think, why is Fisalis? It's tomatillos. And an undergraduate student, Mason Baldwin, is going to tell you all about it. But this is part of her undergraduate research project, and this inspired her so much that she has now applied for graduate school. Hi guys, I'm doing my undergrad research here at South Farm. And in this uh, hoop house high tunnel, we have the husk tomatoes, also known as tomatillos. Um, they Let's are- take a look at those. Yeah. The uh, common, or the technical name is Physalis ixocarpa. And they're a super cool uh, new fruit that we don't see a lot of here in Missouri because they, uh, they're actually like little tomatoes, but they have this uh, husk of a cal calyx um, around them that makes them super unique. Um, they were originally, uh, they originate from Mexico um, and they were cultivated by the Mayans and the Aztecs a long time ago, but we don't see a whole lot of that here in the U.S. So how do you know if they're ripe? Oh, you know they're ripe when these husks around them will turn um, a light papery brown color mm -hmm. instead of this green. Um, and you can leave them inside the husk for, uh, I think, a month after you uh, wow. have collected them. And they'll stay in the fridge that way for a long time. Wow. Wow. So now we have another type here also, don't we? Yeah, we have the, or the original husk tomato tomatillos. And then we have the ground cherry variety, uh -huh. which is... You know, pretty close to its name, they creep along the ground in a really shrub bush-like formation instead of creeping like you normally see with tomatoes. But they have the same kind of fruit, um, just much smaller with the little husk around oh, wow. the edges. How do you know when they're ripe? They will hang on the vine for up to a month after they've ripened, um, but they still get the brown papery husks. Today we have three varieties. We have Super Verde, Purple, <laughs> uh, Oh, which is just a normal little green guy. Uh-huh. Or yellow. Or yellow, yeah. yes. And then a really cool one is this purple beauty variety that actually has purple skin. And then our largest variety is Miltomate, which is just large and yellow. Well, let's let's taste the um, the big ones first. Okay. The, the tomatillos. So now what now this, this one is so first up, we have Super Verde. Uh -huh. And you can see inside, they, they're not as juicy like a tomato, but... Mm -mm. So let's see. Mm. It's sweet. I didn't expect that. It's really sweet. And it's got a lighter texture than normal tomatoes. It's not as like dense and juicy. And admittedly, you're not a big tomato eater. Mm -mm. But you like this. I do. I do. And mm -hmm. Folks, this is the first time I've ever ate this one. It's good. Mm, it is really good. And I'm, I I'm up with my salad for lunch. Mm, that's a good idea. Yeah, I'm not the kind of person who will just pick up a tomato and eat it. That's not for me. Mm, here's the purple that's one. That's good. Yeah, here's the purple one. It looks, I'll get closer yeah, get to close. you guys the inside. So you've got purple on the outside too. Here's the husk. This one, I don't know. Not nice sweet. Mm-mm. But it doesn't scream tomato either. No, no, these are totally different tastes of tomato. Mm -hmm. But not as sweet as the Super Verde, but mm -hmm. still good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're looking for something more or less sweet, I guess that would be better. Mm -hmm. And our last one we have is the Miltomate. Okay. These um, still have that light, fluffy kind of inside, but they're pretty yellow, pretty bright mm -hmm. yellow when they're ripe. Mm. Not as sweet again as a super verde, but to me this one would, would be great in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a salad. Yeah, I think this one's my favorite for salads. Uh -huh, Maybe it, the super verde for snacking. Per, yes, exactly. Get that, get that hunger. You see that little pick me up. And, mm -hmm. But oh yeah, this would be, you know, when you, even even like a fruit salad. Mm -hmm. It'd be really good because it really gives that same type of texture as eating a fruit. Yeah. Now. We're moving to the husk cherries. Now, surely you don't eat this whole husk. No. 
So for the husk cherries, they come like this and they will actually stay on the plant for a while until you shake them off and then you just peel it open and pop it in. You want to try this one? Sure. So this is Goldie. I'm going to try this Goldie. You know, it's kind of like wine tasting. I should have my, my palate cleansed first. Oh yeah. <laughs> Something in between. I really like the Goldies. Mm. They're a little more sour than the um, bigger uh, tomatillos. They are, but they got that little bit of sweetness to them. Mm -hmm. All right. So, let's try the next one. The next one's pineapple. Yeah. This is another variety of, of them. Do we have pineapple? Open oh, them. I think they're so cute. I love mm -hmm. just snacking on them. Now, this one actually tastes like pineapple. No. Which blows my mind. It does. And actually, what we just tasted may not have been 100% right, too. Right. Because there should be a little bit more of a yellow, I, I think. Mm hmm. And some of these are a little more green. Because we have to, because this is the very, the very first, but still the ones with, with green on them tasted really good. Like you said, like a pineapple. Mm -hmm. Now, the standby is Aunt Molly. Right. So let's, we got some Aunt Molly's here. These are these these are our Aunt Molly's. And they're big, they're, they're, they're bigger fruits. Mm -hmm. They yield a lot. So let's. Yeah, if you're growing something at home, then I, I could recommend Aunt Molly for sure. It'd be something that's very reliable. Mm. It's good, but it doesn't stand up to pineapple. It doesn't. And, and one final thing, what have you noticed about growing the tomatillos? Are they as tame as a tomato? They are wild. Let me tell you, if you decide to grow any of these in your own garden or out in your yard, make sure you cage it up soon, like early, uh, and get it ready to go because they grow crazy like weeds. They're, they're, it's not trained to grow. <laughs> they're all completely different. It's, it's very chaotic. <laughs> it is. They're kind of the chaos of the, of the, of the fruit family, oh, the vegetable sure. family. Yes, yes. Yeah. I think it shows how much we bred tomatoes mm -hmm. and such. But we want to make sure we don't read the taste out of them. Right. Since Mason has concluded the videos, we have now compiled all the data. And what we found is that in both the field and the hoop house, the purple and the miltomate yielded much more than the super verde. Whereas the Goldie, Pineapple, and Aunt Molly ground cherries yielded about the same, with Aunt Molly yielding slightly more than the rest. Now, taste was something different. We took the tomatillos and the ground cherries to many events, including the state fair. And we had folks give them a rating of one to five, with, with five being the best and one being the least. Now, on the tomatillos, the overall favorite was the purple and also the miltomate. They, they thought those two were probably tasted the best. And they could see them being used in fresh garden salads and other dishes such as that. The ground cherries, we compare them to many cherry tomatoes. In the ground cherries, the best were Goldie and Pineapple. They scored 4.6, while Aunt Molly's was 4.4. So not, not, not much difference in them. Whereas the, the cherry tomatoes ranged everywhere from 3 to 4.7, with only a couple of them like Sun Goes Select scoring 4.7. So overall, people really liked both the tomatillos and the ground cherries, and they had many ideas for new uh, dishes that they could use with them or just eat them fresh. Yeah.